Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this session, we will talk about list data type in Python. Okay, first we have to know what is a list. List is a built-in data type which represents a collection of elements. That means it is developed by the Python developers. That is why built-in and it can contain any number of elements. Next, lists are versatile and can contain different data types. That is why it is known as a heterogeneous. Let me show you. Suppose if you write L equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or whatever. How many number of elements you can store in a single place. That is what is known as list. If I write print L, the list will be printed. Okay. Now why versatile? Here I have written integer. Now I can write string also if i write python see the same list can contain integer string any data type even function we studied about that in our function class that list can contain function also because that is also a data type that is why it is known as heterogeneous okay next list are defined by square brackets you can see that square bracket is used to define a list. Now we will understand what is the difference between array and list. Array also contain many number of elements. List also can contain any number of elements. Okay. First, let me show you that how array works. When you define an array, a memory block is created. Now suppose I write int array 4 that means the array will contain four elements and the elements will be integers okay so i can write here 1 2 3 4 so a block of memory is created and the numbers are stored okay but what about list list directly doesn't store the data instead when i write L equals to 1, 2, 3, 4. It first saves 1 in a memory. Let's say 100. When I declare 2, it is allocated in a separate memory. It may be 200. Next, when I declare 3, let's say 300 memory location. And now, if I write 4 that can be stored in another memory location 400 okay now when the list is created the memory address are stored instead of the values you get my point the difference between the array and the list array means the values are directly stored but in list the values are stored in a memory location but the memories are stored in the list so instead of values, the memories are stored in the list. And that is why list is known as referential array. Now what is 100? 100 is the memory location of value 1. 200 means memory location of value 2. 300 means memory location of value 3. 400 means memory location of value 4. Now let's visualize this by doing coding. If I write print id of list. ID function gives us the memory address of the list. This is the memory address of the list. But if I print ID L of 0. Now what will happen? Different address. This is the memory address of 1. Now if I write print ID of 1. See this will be same. Because this is the memory location of value 1. Same way if I write 1. Now see what will be the value, A different one and if I write print id of 2, okay. So L of 1 means the first, the second element 2, the memory location of 2 and id of 2 means the memory location of 2. So it is giving us the same value. But what is the memory location value of L? That is a different value. The value of the list, the memory location of the list that is 192, 1, 9, 2 and 
592 one is stored in 592 next which containing 624 59 now in 592 the value of one is stored separate memory location 624 and here the value two is stored so this is the mechanism of list now it's clear the difference between array and list. Array is fixed. See the array is fixed, but list is dynamic. That means we can add new numbers also. Second, array is homogeneous, but list is heterogeneous. Because if I want to store a string here, they have a different size. Integer has a different size and string has a different size. So we cannot just store it here because it is already allocated. But in case of list, we can store a string here like Python. And it may have a separate memory location, maybe 600. Now, we are storing the address of the memory in the list. So, no problem. Whenever we are trying to access 600, it will go to the 600 and it will bring Python. That is why it, is, it can contain heterogeneous elements. Next, speed of execution. Speed of execution of list is slow. Why? Because first it has to go for the address value, then it has to look for the value in that address. So that is why it has to work more and the speed of the execution is slow. That is why Python is slower. It's a kind of disadvantage of Python. But here it is not like that. You can directly access the value. So it is much faster. Next one is memory. See, you can also say that in Python, more memory is used in comparison with array. Here only. 1, 2, 3, 4, one block is enough, but here you have to locate a block for address and then a different block for storing the value. So, memory is also much used in case of making a list. Okay, now you have a clear idea about the difference between an array and a list. Now, we know what is a list. List is a built-in data type. List is a collection of ordered elements and the elements can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. Okay. Now, how to define a list by giving a square bracket or a third bracket. Now, how to create an empty list. If I just write this way, a equals to only the brackets and no value, then it is known as an empty list. Now, if I run it, an empty list will be printed. Clear? Now, next is one dimensional list. First, understand the difference between one dimension, two dimension, three dimension. One dimension represents single axis, single line. Two dimension, two axis, length and breadth. Maybe a plane. Three dimension means three axis. So let's say length, breadth and height. Now first we will create a one dimensional homogeneous list. Here one, two, three, four. This is a one dimensional list. You can see why homogeneous because all of them are integers. Okay. Now if I write print a b comma b c comma c d then which type of list is this this is homogeneous because all the elements are string same data type now if i write print one comma string python then this is a heterogeneous list why? Because it is containing integer and string also. One integer, Python string. So, different kind of data type. Different kind of data type means heterogeneous. Clear? Now, what is two dimensional? That means two axis. So, here you can see that one, two, three are integers. But four, five is a list. Yes, a list can contain another list also. Because a list can contain any elements, any data type. That is, that may be an integer, that may be a float, that may be a string, boolean, list, tuple, set, dictionary, function, any data type it can contain. So here, 4, 5 itself is a list. So this list is containing integers as well as a list. So this is an heterogeneous two-dimensional list. Now, if I write, print 1 comma 3 comma 2 comma 4 uh, let me give this one 
This is a two dimensional list that is clear. Two axes. Now the question is it is homogeneous or heterogeneous. Both of the elements are list. This is also a list. This is also a list. Elements are separated by comma and both of them are list. So this is a homogeneous list. Now suppose I write print 1 comma 1.5 comma 2.53. Now tell me this is a homogeneous or heterogeneous. This is a heterogeneous because this is a float and this is a list. Now next three dimensional list. See here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3 is a one dimensional list. 4, 5, 6 is a one dimensional list. But they are together in a 2D list. And this is also a 2D list. So this is also a 2D list. And this is also a 2D list. And all of them makes the 3D list. Clear? Now to remember I can give you a trick. If it opens with a single bracket like this one. This is a one dimensional list. If it contains two squared brackets, then you can say this is a two dimensional list. And if it contains three squared brackets, three squared opening brackets, same three squared closing bracket, then it is a 3D list. So one 3D list can contain two two dimensional list. Clear? Next, heterogeneous list. We have already understood that heterogeneous means different kinds of data. Here, one, you say integer. Two, you say which data type? String, 3.0, float. This is list, key value. We have not studied yet, but this is a dictionary data type. Okay, so a simple list can contain different kinds of data type. And that is why it is known as heterogeneous list. Okay. Now, I can also use the range function within a list. What does range function do? We also studied this while studying for loop. Range function generates a number. Range of 5 means 5 number will be generated. And the numbers which are generated are kept within a list. Now, if I print this, see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers are generated and they are within a list. So, by writing list also you can create a list okay let me show you if i write a equal to list and then i print a so one list will be created empty list clear now do you remember the type function we studied before also type function provides us the data type of the variable so so now if i run it the output will be list because the data type is list clear so these are the way by which we can create a list now let's understand how we can access any items of a list we can do it by two ways number one is index wise or item wise indexing we have already learned if i write print l of two what will happen 0, 1, 2, 0 based indexing or we can say positive indexing. So, 3 will be printed. And what about negative indexing? If I write L of minus 1, it starts from the right side. This one is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. So, L of minus 1 means 6. So, if I run it, the output will be 3 and 6. So this is the way you can access any element of a list. Okay. Now what is item wise? Now if I write for item in L print item. What will happen? It will print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. See 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this way also you can traverse a list. Indexing by using the index position item wise. By using the exact items. Okay. Now slicing concept you remember. Slicing means. Printing a part of a list. 
if i print want to print 1 to 5 it will start from 0 indexing 0 1 2 3 4 last one is excluded so it will print up to from 1 from tom to ram clear what about this one you can say no starting point means starting from the beginning so harry 0 1 2 3 is excluded last one is excluded so harry tom run see what happens okay now what about this one starting from minus 3 minus 3 means negative indexing minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 starting from raja nothing in the end so up to the end so raja ram sam now let me run it clear now you can solve these things by yourself this one this one also we have just learned and our next topic is how to add any item to a list let me create a list one two three four now i want to add five at the end how i can do it append function you remember append five that means five will be appended to the end of the list so if i print l what will be the output it will give me the list added with five okay but now if i print l then what will be the value of l see this has been added so when you are using the function this is added to the end of the list but if you try to print in this way then it will show you as none because the function returns nothing so you have to print the variable itself clear next this one is for you this is a list which type of list is this try to tell two brackets opening so two dimensional one two three is a list four five six is a list elements are separated by comma so just take one element and check which element is this list second element list both of them are list homogeneous two opening bracket two dimensional clear 2d homogeneous list now i have taken a blank list empty list we have just learned how to create now if i traverse this item wise for i in list for i means first one two three will be taken this is an element first element one two three is taken now for j in i j means first one the one now one will be appended to the new list same way two will be appended to the new list three will be appended to the new list once the for loop completes it will go to the outer for loop and it will take the second element of the list second element means four five six so once four five six is taken then again in next for loop now what will happen four five six now first four will be taken four will be appended to the list five appended six appended now let me show it to you in python tutor see first list will be created in the first zeroth position a list zero one two in the second position a list zero one two clear now if I click new list and empty list is created. Fine. Now for i in list. i first it will point to the first list. That is 1, 2, 3. Now for j in i. That means j will be 1. j in i. j in 0th position right now. j will be 1. 1 will be added to the new list. Okay. Now next, again, the next will be added, 2, 2 will be added to this list, see, 2 is added, again for loop, now the value will be 3, j is 3, j will be added, see, j is added, okay, now this for loop has completed execution, 1, 2, 3 is completed. Now it will go to the outer for loop. And now i is pointing to the first element. Now i will point to the second element. 
because I will I will be point to the first position of the list. Clear? Now what will happen? Again the loop will start. So J will become four, the first one. Now J will be appended to the list. Again J will become five. J five will be appended to the list. J will become six. Six will be appended to the list. Clear? Now the outer loop also has completed execution. Now print new list. This is the new list. This will be printed. See what happens. Clear? Okay. So this is the way you can append a list or you can create a new list where you can put an elements of other list. Okay. Clear? Now tell me one more thing. If I write l dot append 6 comma 7 and I try to print L. What will happen? See this will be an error. Why? Because append can add only one argument. Append takes exactly one argument. Only one element you can add by using the append statement. Okay. Now if I want to add more than one element, I need the extend. How? If I write 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I want to write l dot extend within a list. I write 5, 6, 7. I want to add 5, 6, 7 to the end of the list. Now if I print, print l, see the output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Now what is the difference then? Append can add exactly one argument. Extend can take or add more than one value. Okay. Now if I want to insert any element into a specific position, then I have to call the insert function. Suppose I want to add one in the second position. Okay. So what I can write? I can write insert function. Insert. You have to first give the position number. Suppose I want to add in first position. Instead of 2, I want to write 10 here. So I have to give 1, comma 10. Now if I write print L, what will happen? Okay. So in the first position, 10 has been insta inserted. If I write it 100, what will happen? There will be 100. Okay. So by giving any position also you can insert by using the insert function. So what are the functions we have learned for adding? Append. Add any item at the end of a list. Extend. Add many items at the end of a list. Insert. By giving a position number, we can insert any number into the list. Clear? So tell me what will be the output of this code snippet. If I run it, what will be the output? 4, 5, 6. Why? The first element of the list is a list 1, 2, 3. Second element 4, 5, 6. Third element 7, 8, 9. This is a two dimensional list. So if I write L of 1, that means it will fetch the first element of the list. That is 4, 5, 6. Now I want only 5. Now to access 5, I have to write 1 again. Now 4 is in 0th position, 5 is in 1st position, 6 is in 2nd position. So now if I run it, the output will be 5. Clear? Now how I can access only 9? Try to tell me the code. Print. First I have to go to the 3rd element of the list. That is 7, 8, 9. 0th position, 1st position, 2nd position. So I have to write 2. Okay, now we have fetched 7, 8, 9, but I want only 9. So now 7 is in 0th position, 8 is in 1st position, 9 is in 2nd position. So again I have to write 2. Now see, 9 will be the output. Okay, now suppose if I write print L, 
वन जीरो टेल मी व्हाट विल बी द आउटपुट एल ऑफ वन मीन्स फर्स्ट पोजिशन सो इन जीरो पोजिशन दिस इज फर्स्ट पोजिशन सो फोर फाइव सिक्स नाउ जीरो सो नाउ फोर इज इन द जीरो पोजिशन सो द आउटपुट विल बी फोर क्लियर नाउ टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ थ्री डी लिस्ट हेयर यू कैन सी इट इज ए थ्री डी लिस्ट बिकॉज दिस इज ए टू डी लिस्ट दिस इज ए टू डी लिस्ट दिस इज ऑल्सो ए टू डी लिस्ट एंड टूगेदर दे आर मेकिंग ए थ्री डी लिस्ट layers of list you can see now if i try to fetch zero then what will be the output this is in zeroth position right this list is in first position this list is in second position so if i run it the output will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 a 2d list clear now i want to print only 4 5 6 so what i can do if i write 1 Because now one two three is in zero position, four five six is in one position, so only four five six will be printed. Clear. Now if I want to access only the six, how I can do it? Now so start again. This is in zero position. This is in first position. Six is in second position. So if I want only six, I have to write two. clear so this is the way you can access the element of 3d list using indexing also clear now suppose i print print my 3d list and i write 2 then i write 1 then i write 0 can you tell me what will be the output first my list 2 that means second position zeroth position first position second position so we are here now 13 14 15 16 17 18 okay next first position so now this becomes zeroth position and this one is first position so now we are in 16 17 18 okay now again if i write zero that means 16 because 16 is in the zeroth position so the output will be 16 let me show you Oh sorry, I have written three D list. This will be three uh, D list sixteen. Clear. Now let's start today's session. First one is which operators can be applied on list? Two operators. Number one arithmetic operator. Number two is the membership operator. Here I have taken list one, one two three, list two four five six. Now I am using the addition symbol. So what will be the result? Both of the list will be concatenated into a single list. clear now if i use the multiplication operator what will happen the list will be repeated three times and it will be in a single list so 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 so two types of arithmetic operators can be applied on list additional operator multiplication operators no other arithmetic operators can be applied on list clear next one is membership operator you remember membership operator in operator and not in operator in means to check whether the element is present inside the list or not here the list is 1 2 3 4 5 3 so in my list yeah 3 is in my list so print 3 is in the list so it will be printed clear now if i write 6 not in my list my list 1 2 3 4 5 no 6 is not in the list so this is condition is also true so it will be printed 6 is not in the list clear now if i write 5 then what will happen Five is in the list, so this condition is not true. So this print statement will not be printed. See, nothing will be printed. So membership operator can also be applied on list. So two operators: arithmetic membership. Membership operator in, not in. Arithmetic operator, additional operator, and multiplication operator. Okay, fine. Now editing using indexing. List data type can be edited. Here I have taken a list one three point five seven nine nine point six. Okay, now I want that three point five to be replaced by six. First access three point five using my list one. My list one equal to six means the value in the first position will be replaced by six. Now if I run it, what will happen? See three point five is replaced by six. So this is the way you can edit a list also. Clear. 
Now if I want to edit a list using slicing, how can I do it? Here I want 357 to be replaced by 2 comma 3. How can I do it? 3 is in first position, 5, second position, 7, third position. So slicing concept 1 to 4, last one is excluded. Here it will be replaced by 2 comma 3. Now if I print, clear. So 357 replaced by 2 comma 3. Clear. Okay, so these are the way we can edit by indexing or by editing using slicing. Okay, now let's understand how we can delete any element. How we can delete? If I use the del keyword, we have studied before also, it will delete the complete list. So my list equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now if I write del my list and I try to print it, see it will show as an error because the list is deleted. Now again I am trying to access the list, so it will show my list is not defined. Clear? Next, I don't want to delete the whole list. I want to delete a portion of the list. How I can do it? Same concept, slicing, del my list 1, 2, 3. That means 2 will be deleted because 2 is in first position, 3 will be deleted because 3 is in second position and the last one is excluded. So now if I print it, 2 and 3 will be deleted. So the remaining will be 1, 4, 5. So by using only the del keyword, you can delete the whole list or by using slicing, you can delete a portion of the list. Clear? Next, understand the remove function. Remove function means if I want to remove any particular element, I can use the remove function and pass the value as the argument. If I run it, 3 will be removed. Okay, now if I write 5, then what will happen? 5 will be removed. 1, 2, 3, 4. Clear? If I write 1, what will happen? 1 will be removed. So the value you pass will be removed from the list. Okay. Now next understand pop function. Pop function means it eliminates the last element of the list. Here the list is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now if I run the pop function, then it will delete 5 from the list. Let me show you. The element removed is the last element, that is the 5, and updated list will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Clear? So, if you give pop and you give nothing as argument, it will delete the last element of the list. But instead of the last element, I want to delete something from the middle. What I can do? If I write my list dot pop to, that means second element will be deleted. Now, if I run it, See what happens, 3 will be deleted. The remaining list is 1, 2, 4. Okay, so if you pass any argument in the pop function, then the value at that particular index, at that specified index will be deleted. If you pass nothing, it will delete the last element from the list. Clear, you understand the difference? Now the next concept is clear. What does clear function do? It clears the elements of the list. If I run it, a blank list will be printed. So it deletes the values of the list. Now tell me what is the difference between del and clear then? Del is also deleting the list. Clear is also deleting the list. Then what is the difference? The difference is that clear function doesn't delete the list. It deletes the values from the list. The same if I write a code for you, like my list, my list equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I write del my list. Now, if I try to access my list, see what will happen. We have seen before also, it will show an error because now the list is deleted. But still you are trying to access the list. So name my list is not defined. But here it is not like that. List is clear. The values are clear. But an empty list is existing. Okay. So you get the difference between clear and delete. Delete deletes the list. Clear clears the values from the list. 
okay in this session we will study about list comprehension list comprehension is a concise way of creating list you can generate a new list by applying an expression to each item in an existing iterable and also filtering the items based on a given condition okay so the syntax is this is the new list where the result will be stored this is the expression that is the operation applied to each item then for item in iterable means i am starting a for loop item is the each value in the iterable and if condition means any condition you can apply so everything is done in a single line and kept in a new list okay let's understand this by an example first i will take a list a 4 6 8 i'm sorry 4 6 8 2 3 4 5 40 okay now what i want i want only those numbers which are greater than 5 and i want to keep this in a separate list now new list b equals to list item for item in the iterable which one is the iterable here a that means first it will take 4 then it will take 6 then it will take 8 it will continue a for loop now if the condition condition is item greater than 5 now if the condition is true if the value is greater than 5 then it will be stored into b so first it will take 4 4 greater than 5 no it will not be stored 6 6 greater than 5 yes it will be stored 8 greater than 5 yes it will be stored so the item will be simply kept in the new list now if i print b what will be the result say 6 8 9 40 only those numbers which fulfills the condition the condition is greater than 5 will be the output so in a single line i have used for loop i have used if condition and i have created a new list so this is what is known as list comprehension clear now suppose i want to square these numbers which are greater than 5 so what i can do item into item now what will happen see what happens 36 64 81 16 100 so square values of this number so whatever operation you want to perform you can perform it here okay now next understand the next one here i have taken two dimensional list 1 2 3 is a list 4 5 5 is a list and they are kept in a separate list now what i want to do i want to concatenate these two list into a single list so in a single list all elements will be there i will do this using list comprehension first list to where the result will be stored the new list next j this is the expression so i want to keep j in the list now next for i in list that means the zeroth position will be taken this is in zeroth position this is in first position so first zeroth position will be taken so 1 2 3 will be taken now on that i start another for loop for j in i what is i i is 1 2 3 here now for j in i so j will take each item from i so first it will be 1 and 1 will be kept in list 2 and this loop will continue first one will be kept then 2 then 3 once it completes it comes out the of this and it goes into this for loop again now for i now i will be 1 so for i in list means 4 5 5 5 now next for j in i that means now i 4 5 5 5 so every element of 4 5 5 will be taken j will become 4 then j will become 5 then j will become 5 and all the elements will be kept in list 2 because j will be kept in list 2 so now list 2 will contain all the elements now if i print see what happens clear 
next do an another one here i want to square only those numbers which are even squares new list now expression what is the expression squaring the numbers for loop i have to iterate all the values of the loop so for num in numbers it will take every number 1 2 3 4 5 once it takes 1 it will check a condition if num modulus 2 equal to equal to 0 if 1 modulus 2 equal to equal to 0 no that is not true so it will skip this one it will go for the next one num in numbers 2 again it will check the condition if the condition matches yes then it will perform the operations so it will, what will it do it will square so 2 square that is 4 so 4 will be printed so 4 will be kept in the new list that is squares and it will give us the result so you can see within a single line we are using for loop if and we are doing some operations on that that is why it is known as list comprehension okay i have taken strings 1 2 3 4 these are in single quote so these are all strings now i want to convert the strings to integers first i have taken the expression that is int of x int you know this is a built-in function so it will convert the string to integers now i have to traverse all the elements so i will start the for loop for x in str list so it will traverse every element of the list and then it will convert it into integer so now this will be integers okay if i want to square all the numbers from 1 to 10 how can i do this using list comprehension a where the value will be stored now i want to square so i take i square now i will start a for loop for i in i will use the range function range function generates sequence of number you remember now for 1 comma 11 why 11 because the last one is excluded so now if i print a see what will happen all the values are squared let's do another one i have taken a list which will contain i love python okay now what i want i want to convert all these letters to uppercase so a new list b equals to expression word dot upper function you remember upper function for word in word we had uh, make it words okay now if i run this i have to print the new list see what happens every word is in uppercase okay now suppose i do uh, let's take this one and now new list c expression a will be kept for loop will start for a in words now can you tell me what will be the output of this one here a is the expression a will be kept when first for loop will be started for a in words every word will be taken now if condition if any char dot lower that means it will be converted into lower case and it will check whether it is within a iou or not for carrying a that means 
Suppose it takes love. So for L, then for O, then for V, then for E, what it will do? First it will convert it into lowercase. Then it will check whether it is in AEIOU or not by using the membership operator. If it is, then it will be stored in the new list. So A will be stored in the new list. Okay, so now let me run this. See what happened? In love, O is there. So it is printed. In Python, O is there. So it is also printed. So it will print only those words which are containing a vowel. Okay. Okay, now let's do another one. Suppose I take the same list and what I want that I want to count the length of the words. How can I do it? Any list equal to length of words for word in words. Length function, we know. Now what it will do? It will give us the length of the words. See what happens. First one, one. Second one, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Clear? So for loop, first word, four word means I will be taken. Then length will be calculated. This is one kept in the list. Love is taken. Four length calculated, kept in the list. Python. Length Python 6, 6 is kept in the list. Clear? We have already studied everything about list. Now this session is to revise or we can say summarize the concept. So we will study about all the characteristics of list. First one, list is ordered. That means the position of each element is fixed. By using index number, we can access any elements of the list. Okay, second mutable. Why mutable? Because you have already seen that any elements can be added, can be deleted, or can be modified. How it can be modified? By using index position or by using slicing. Exactly. How it can be added? What are the functions? Append, extend, insert. How it can be removed? By using remove function, by using pop function by clear or delete you remember all this function so that is why list is mutable clear third list is dynamic size why because even after the list is created you can add elements to the list or you can delete so you don't need to mention the size beforehand that is why the size is dynamic okay next it allows duplicate elements we have seen that same elements can stay in list, but while we will study about set, we will see that set doesn't allow duplicate elements. Okay, now next point is heterogeneous. That also we have done in a single list. We can keep integer, string, float, other list, couple, set, dictionary, any kind of data type. That is why list is heterogeneous. Okay. Next, indexed access. That means that we can access any element using indexing. Python follows zero based indexing. It starts from zero. Or if it follows negative indexing, then starts from minus one. So list can be accessed by using its index. Okay. Next, iteration. List support iteration because we have used for loop to do any iteration on list and perform different kind of operations. So we can say list support iteration. Okay. Now what are the other operations we have already discussed? Appending, inserting, removing, concatenating. How we can concatenate? By using the additional operator. Different kind of operators can be applied. Membership operator, arithmetic operator. List can be sorted also. We have studied about sort function. 
and sorted function and also we have known the difference between sort and sorted okay next concatenation and repetition you remember how we did repetition by using the multiplication operator okay concatenation for that we use as operator next flexible usage that is list are widely used in programming for various purposes we will explore in our later classes so till now we have studied about first the definition of list then heterogeneous then what is the difference between array and the list what is the mechanism then how to create any empty list one dimensional list two dimensional list three dimensional list then using range function also we can create a list then how we can access by indexing or item wise by slicing or how we can add by append to append more than one then we use extend to insert into a particular value we use particular position we use insert statement operators membership operators arithmetic operators how to edit using indexing or slicing how to delete how to delete the whole list or how to delete the values of the list how to remove any particular value what is the pop function then the difference between delete and clear then we studied about different kind of basic functions like len max mean count which count the number of occurrences then index position index position gives us the index of a specific element what about reverse it reverses the list and the difference between sort versus sorted in the last one we did list comprehension we did many small programmings using list comprehension i have just summarized the thing what we have learned till now we have completed everything related to list in our next class we will start tuple data type okay bye till then happy learning